Like so many others, I used to believe I was good with money. I prided myself on not splurging on expensive things, never jet setting off to luxurious vacations and making sure my credit card was paid off each month. That is pretty good. That's good. That's really good. I thought I had it all figured out. I was just coasting by on luck. That's unfortunate. Paying low rent and having family to fall back on whenever things got tight really helped. That's see, that's that's the trope. That's. You see, that makes it easier. I think so many people, they think like, oh, like I had to struggle so much, but like you forget how many privileges you had. Like even me, I had so many privileges. Like even the worst case scenario is I could, even, even today, if shit really hit the fan, I could always move in with my parents. Would it be awful? Yes. But like, there's always that. Like you, you always have fallbacks and you have to acknowledge that you have those things. And maybe we're going to see in this letter that they're going to realize that like, oh, maybe the things I thought I had, I didn't really have. So we'll see. But be grateful what you do have. Because you have a lot more than you're thinking about. One guarantee a viewer. Yes. Yes. Be grateful for what you have because it can always get worse and it can get a lot worse than you think it can. With that being said, back to the letter. The reality check came when I moved into my first apartment on my own. For the first time, I had complete financial independence and I was excited to make this space feel like home. We've all been there. That's when I started putting home decor, little essentials, and everything that caught my eye on credit. In my mind, I wasn't really spending recklessly. I was investing in my new life. At the same time, I fell into the habit of ordering Uber Eats constantly. Today's sponsor, Uber Eats. Just kidding. That'd be kind of funny, though. We got to set something up like that. That'd be really funny. We'll get on it. (laughs) We'll get on it. It seemed harmless. It always seems harmless. Just a few deliveries here and there to save time after a long work day. But here's the catch. I was still at the same low paying job and those expenses were quickly piling up. And the story begins. The story is told as time. (laughs) Literally, genuinely. (laughs) I told myself it was only temporary. I was confident that by any day now, I would land a higher paying job and I'd be able to wipe out that credit card balance not even breaking a sweat. But the better job never came. And that was back in 2022. And I stayed at that same crappy job for two more years, watching my debt grow larger and larger and larger with each passing. What's that old quote we like to say? Hope is not a strategy. That is it. Hope is never a strategy. You got to take action, boys and girls. Got to take action. Finally, I caught a break. Good. That's what I like to hear. I landed a new job. I moved into a cheaper apartment and determined I would start fresh. I like that. A fresh start. New apartment. New job. I like it. I cut up my credit card bills and I promised myself I would never fall back into that same trap. But now I find myself slowly chipping away at a mountain of debt that feels overwhelming. And uh, I, we've all been there. That, that, that sometimes does feel very overwhelming. I found myself slowly chipping away at a mountain of debt that felt more overwhelming than my younger self could have ever imagined. I'm no longer making those big purchases or ordering takeout every night. I thought it was just a few nights a week. <laughs> the story changes. The story always changes. But there's this still voice in my head that says, oh, this coffee, this Uber, this product. It's just $5. It's just five. Chris, it's just $5. It's just $10. It's just $15. It won't make a difference. It's just 50, no, five bucks, 10 bucks, 15 bucks. It's wrong. It definitely does make a difference. It makes a huge difference. And I'm mad it took me so long to realize that. All those small casual swipes and clicks, those, it's just $5 moments were exactly what got me into this mess. It's basic math. If you spend $5 enough times, crazy enough, Einstein once prophesized it, it doesn't stay $5. We know about that. We heard about that. We know the rumors about that. It becomes much bigger. It becomes a much bigger problem and fast. It's frustrating because the damage that was happening right in front of me was my own fault. And I was too naive to see it. Now I'm trying to balance that anger. That's good. I don't want to be too hard on my past self, fair. But at the same time, 
I'm using this frustration as motivation. A dark tool we all have done. <laughs> I, I don't know if I recommend it, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Anyway. <laughs> You know, I, I think before we move on, when it comes Please. to that dark energy, right? Yeah. So I think that we always have two energies inside of us, right? Like these two wolves that are fighting in order to see who is supreme. And for most of my life, I want to live in that positive energy. I want to try to grow my business because I want to help people because I want to be a better me. And I say I probably live 80 to 90% of my life in that positive energy in, in in the things that I want to do because I want to help. But there is that dark energy. There's There's that negative that... That, that F you of yeah. people who've, who've spurned me or who've talked bad to me, who told me I would never succeed, who told me I was too dumb to do it on my own. I don't want to be there all the time, but I think of it like a little bit of NOS, you know, when I'm sitting there and I'm struggling, I'm like, I don't want to do this thing. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to have to sit here and make this course. I don't want to do this podcast today. You think about that. You just have that dark energy, hit that NOS every so often, just 10, 20% live with that dark energy because it can help propel you forward. But you don't want to live there all the time. It it's a good fuel. It burns hot and it gets you fast. But it will destroy your engine if you keep on running it for too long. So, I think it's okay for this listener to every so often use that as a kick in the ass. Like I I effed up, but don't stay there for too long. I effed up, and now what am I going to do about it? Which it sounds like he is making those choices. He is making the hard choice now because he made the easy choices when he was younger, and it set him up for a hard life. And he could keep on kicking that can down the road. But at some point, the piper must always be paid. So he's making the hard choices now in order to set himself up for an easier life down the road. Absolutely. I don't need to treat myself as often as I thought I did. The idea that I deserved all those little splurges was just an excuse. It feels good to take control now. But also, I'm keenly aware of how long and how hard this road to debt freedom is going to be. I want to thank you, Chris and Dominic. Your information, your stories are keeping me motivated. And they remind me that I'm not alone in this. We're all on this journey together. And the support means everything. From, it's just $5, no big deal, until it became too real. Now I'm cutting cards and cutting ties with spending that had me hypnotized. Hmm, I like Damn, that. That's a freaking poem. Yeah, I like it. We need more of these. This was a, I love, I love a good story. That's beautiful. I might, we, we got to hire an animator. We got to animate that thing. That was good. That was um, good on you. Good on you. Yeah. Taking control. Good on you, listener. That, that's, that's awesome. I mean, there's no questions here. So I, I don't know what I'm, I'm supposed to do in this situation. <laughs> Normally during the viewer mailbag, they ask a question, but um, you know, thank you so much for sharing with the audience members and hopefully people will learn from your experience and not have to put themselves inside the exact same situation that you found yourself in. There were so many parts during that that letter that really spoke to me. You know, when I was thinking where you said like, oh, it's just $5, just, just $10, just $15. It's not that big of a deal. And I agree. We shouldn't be only focused on these $5 decisions. We also need to focus on the $5,000 decisions. I don't care about, oh, I, I go and I buy coffee every single day if you're spending 80% of your money on your rent. Like <laughs> we have bigger issues we need to deal with. But he is also correct in that if you're doing it every single day, $5 20 times does not equal $5. And I think so many times we've, we've done that to ourselves. I know I used to do it to myself with Amazon purchases or little online purchases. Oh, it's only five bucks, only five bucks, only five bucks. And in your mind, your mind offsets it as it's saying, I only spent $5. But if you spend $5 20 times, you spend a hundred bucks. And now that a hundred dollars is gonna break the bank for most people, but if you do this every single day, month in, month out, you can see that that $100 starts to really add up pretty quickly. Okay, there's always bigger issues, but I'm glad that he realized it younger than most people do. Most people go their whole life without ever realizing that they're just stuck in this hamster wheel of consumerism. And so many people, they hate their job. So in order to feel better on the weekends or feel better about their job, they go and they spend money because they deserve it. They need to feel good. So they go and spend money. But by them spending money, they now tie themselves more strongly to the job that they hate, that they have to go and buy something in order to feel better so that they won't continue this cycle. And every time you make that purchase, you're just tying yourself tighter to the job that you hate. And it's such a conundrum that people find themselves in because you can't buy yourself to happiness. You can't earn yourself to happiness. That's an illusion. You have to be okay with yourself, be okay with wherever you are, 
then you'll be able to find that happiness. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've been in that spot where it's just a few bucks. It's just a few bucks, you know? I'll be honest. I have a gym membership. I have two gym memberships. One I pay for, one I don't pay for. One's nicer and farther. One's closer and I pay for, right? And I want to cancel it. I, I, just, I just don't go there that often. When I do go there, it's usually with Chris. And I love that. I love it. Chris is the reason I'm you keeping You can still go with me too. without it. You can still go with me without it. I have the, uh, I have, I have the black pass. Ah, what? Ah, yeah, that's definitely getting axed for sure. Um, anyway, I, I, I keep getting charged. Like, it's only 10 bucks. It's only 10 bucks, right? But it's like, if you're not using it, that adds up. And don't forget about that annual fee too. That, that adds up too. Um, so I to- but- totally get where this guy's coming from. Like, it's so easy to downplay. It's just five. It's just 10. It's just 15. It's just, listen, if it's under 100, we don't got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. Uh, were you going to say something, Chris? I, I noticed there was a thought that popped in you. Yeah, what I was thinking is like, look at like us talking about money there just for a second. You saying like, hey, I'm still paying for this thing. It costs $10. And then just by you having the courage to say that, yep. talk about your money issue, I was able to say, hey, just so you know, I could bring a free guest every time I go. Yep. And you only go to that gym when you go with me. So I just saved you $10 a month. You can give me $10 every month and I'll let you go to jail with it. <laughs> Listen, exactly. Chris just made a profit. Just like, it's the art of the deal right there, baby. I love it. I love it. No, but that's true. Like, look right there, live and in person, this podcast only, just like that. By talking about money, we solved a financial problem. And we have a Fi Guys podcast. Imagine what you could do in your life. There's so much, so much out there that can be changed. Be that change. Find that change. I love that. That was awesome. I dude, that was that was that was really good. That's that awesome. Anyway, that was good. That was yeah, I enjoyed that. Wait, that good. Um I mean, really to our viewer, like just congratulations on, on taking yeah. the first step. And I know you said that you're you're kind of kicking yourself in the ass right now. Like, why did I do this? Why am why did it take me so long to see it? And it's so frustrating when you wake up from the matrix and you realize that you were in there. But it's okay. We're all in it until we're willing to see. You can't be the guide to yourself. You had to eventually come to that realization. Maybe you heard the podcast. It sounds like you listened to the podcast, which is awesome. Maybe that helped you to realize where you were, where you were going wrong. And then you were able to finally see the world as it actually is and then make the conscious decision. Many people see the world as it is, but they don't actually make the conscious decision to now want to change it. And you did that. You have taken such a big step that most people will not do. They'll sit there and they'll be like, yeah, $5, $10, $15. I shouldn't do that. Like, but, or, and they will continue to do it because it is an easier choice to begin to fulfill those impulses, those right now impulses. And I think the thing you've begun to realize, and this is the thing that I want all of our listeners to realize is whether you pay the debt now or you pay the debt in the future, you're going to have to pay the debt. Nothing in this world is free. And the hard part about life is that if you pay it now or you pay it in the future, that's still you. You still have to pay it. Yeah. You have to put in that work. So you're realizing now that all the work you put in now is only setting up yourself for the future. You need to start to learn to love the person, future you. Where so many of us think, oh, F, F future me. That guy's going to have to deal with that. That gal's going to have to deal with that. That sucks for their situation but I don't have to deal with that today. I get to have fun today. I get to go out and I get to drink. I get to party, I get to spend all my money. And future me has to deal with a hangover. Future me has to deal with the bill. But at the end of the day, that's still you. And I would much rather when I'm 50, 60, 70 years old, be able to look back at me at 32 years old and be like, thanks, bro. You really set me up for right here, right now. Rather than looking back at me at my age right now and be like, you idiot, you screwed me over so bad. So it's always a balance, right? Of living for today, but also set yourself up for tomorrow, which it sounds like you're on that path now with us. So thank you so much. And please just continue to spread the word, bring more people along for the journey because that's where this fire continues to spread. We get to bring more people. I don't think that financial independence is ever going to be, Dominic, um, something that everyone does. I think it's always going to be a niche thing that only some people try to pursue. And I think that's actually required. If everyone pursues financial independence, everyone couldn't do it because the economy would like grind to a halt. We need consumerism at this point, the way that our economy is built. But that also means that some of us can have the choice to escape the matrix and continue to live the way that we want if we're willing to learn, 
but more importantly, take those learnings that we do and put them into action. 100%. 100%. I love that. Thanks for stopping by for viewer mailbag. We appreciate you. You got this, bro. Good job. I'm really proud of you. And continue listening, continue spreading the, fr- continue spreading the word um, about financial independence to anyone that you can. We're always here for you. This video podcast is sponsored by Monzon Wealth. The content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. We do not endorse specific products or services. Past performance does not guarantee future results. The opinions expressed are those of the hosts and guests, not the podcast sponsor. It is crucial to consult with a qualified financial advisor or professional who can provide advice tailored to your specific needs before making any financial decisions, investments, or taking any other actions. If you are seeking specified help, you can reach out to Chris at monsonwealth.com.